Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of CUDA Crash Course and in this video we're going to go over uh, a naive version of parallel reduction. So these next couple of videos will be a you know a complete look at optimization. So we're going to look at you know naively how would we implement parallel reduction just kind of going based upon how we would implement a sequential algorithm that does this then follow that up we'll address things like uh, uh, warp divergence, shared memory bank conflicts, and all the way down to things like loop unrolling. But to start off, we're going to start. We're going to look at you know how do we just do a first implementation, kind of like we did with matrix multiplication. So the first question is, what is parallel reduction? So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. It's pretty simple. Now with parallel reduction, basically if we have some long vector that's of n elements. We want to add everything in those elements together. Now, uh, the reason why this is th this so this is a pretty common operation uh, uh, that can be accelerated because of the it's it's what we call embarrassingly parallel. And the reason why that is is because none of the additions are really dependent uh, at, at every step. None of the additions are dependent on each other. So adding ten and one is completely independent of adding eight and negative one together. So they can be paralyzed fairly easily. So what we end up doing is uh, at every single step, we end up adding these partial sums together. So first we'll add every adjacent element together, then every fourth element, then every eighth element, every sixteenth, and we'll go ahead and do that for the entire vector until we're left with just a single sum. Now, just as kind of a forewarning of why we need to optimize this, we can already see a problem uh, in terms of uh, our warps and what they're doing at every cycle and the amount of threads that we have currently launched. And as we can see, even at this first iteration, uh, say if we have, uh, let's say uh, this will be 32 or uh, this will be 16 elements here, we see where only half the threads need to be active at any given moment. So here to add these two together, this thread doesn't have to be active or doing anything. So we'll see that you know this kind of divergence where you know half the threads are active, half the threads are not active can be a pretty big performance hit, especially if we can just assign these threads other work to do during that time or kind of change our algorithm a little bit uh, to compensate for that. So we'll look at that in a little bit. But for now, we're just going to do this naive implementation. So let's go ahead and look at it. We'll open up this sum reduction diverged project. So it will use shared memory, so we're not going, you know, completely uh, terrible implementation. We're going to give us a, a, a fairly decent baseline, so we're at least going to use shared memory. So here we have our main function. So what we're going to do the, with the, in the main function is what we do with everything. We're going to first initialize a, uh, a vector that has 2 to the 16 elements, so 65, 536 elements. Uh, for simplicity, we'll just go ahead and initialize it all with ones right now. We could do it with random numbers, but just to verify that it works, uh, we're going to just add uh, 65, 536 ones together. So our result should be 65, 536. So then uh, we're actually going to break this up into two different steps, both using the same kernel. So uh, we're going to start out with uh, 65, 536 elements. So in order to reduce that, you know, down to a single element, you see that we're going to have to have a lot of steps in there. And so we can actually just decompose this into two separate uh, kernel invocations. And the reason why we do that is because we don't really have a, uh, uh, for say a set number of blocks that we launch, uh, we don't really have, there's no global synchronization inside of a GPU. So, uh, to compensate for that, we can just make kernel launch as our global synchronization point. So in this case, we will split up our original 65, 536 matrix to be uh, a collection of 256 uh, thread thread blocks. So we'll end up launching at our first reduction. Each of those uh, each of those thread blocks will calculate a single element uh, to go to kind of a lower tree. So uh, 65, 536 will be condensed down into those partial sums into a single result of uh, 256 elements that are all partial sums. Then we'll call sum reduction again, in this case with just a single thread block, and that single thread block will accumulate those 256 partial sums. 
and then we'll go ahead and copy the data out, print the result, and then make sure that it's 65,536 with this assert. So as far as the kernel goes, what does that look like? So we're going to have partial uh, this shared memory, and the shared memory size is going to be equal to the number of threads uh, times the size of an integer, which in this case is going to be four. So this is going to be uh, uh, every thread will be working or will load in a single element. So we'll size it like that. Then we'll go ahead and just calculate our global thread ID, and then uh, every single thread will load in its particular. Uh, uh, its corresponding value from the main uh, the main vector, so uh, that big 65536 vector, every single thread will load in one element according to its global thread ID. Then here's the loop where we're actually going to be uh, uh, doing this reduction. So to do this reduction, instead of a normal just loop from say zero to n, uh, because it's a stride based, we're going to start at one. So our stride is going to be, we're going to add adjacent elements. And then that's going to multiply by two every single time. So S times equals two. And then we want to do this as long as our stride is less than the block length uh, or the block dimension. So the number of threads in the block. We're using one dimensional blocks, so they're only going to have threads in the X direction. So in this case, how is it going to work? It's going to, uh, in the first one, it will add uh, each each thread will add um, or each other thread will add the uh, additional or the adjacent blocks together. So thread zero will add thread zero and thread one. Uh, thread two will add thread two and thread three, and so on. And which threads are actually active is based upon this mod operation. So as long as uh, two times the current stride. Uh, mod the thread idx mod this is equal to zero. We're going to go ahead and calculate this partial sum, and then we'll go ahead and just store it and overwrite the value in the uh, in our shared memory. There's no real reason why we have to you know write anything out to global memory or have a new entry to store this partial sum, because at the end of the day we're just accumulating this in our original matrix. So kind of like how we saw in that original diagram uh, on that slide. We can just go ahead and override it. Uh, we don't need to waste any other steps. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So in the base case, say our thread ID is zero, our stride is uh, one, so it'll be one. Uh, so it'll be uh, two here. So zero mod two is equal to zero. But then we look at thread one, the next thread, that will be uh, thread one mod two and that will be equal to one. So in this case, it won't be doing anything. So that's this thread divergence we were talking about. And so we see that this kind of gets pretty bad. So if we can pack work a little bit better in later versions of parallel reduction, uh, we're gonna be doing, uh, we're gonna get some good performance uh, increases. Then of course, because we're working on shared memory, we have to make sure that we're uh, calling sync threads and we're uh, making sure every value is loaded and written before we go to the next cycle. And then finally, at the very end, we'll only have one. So for a thread of 256, or for a block of 256 threads, only the zero thread will be active for that last sum calculation. And so it'll only be that one element. So in reality, we only need the zero thread in that block uh, to write out the result. And so we'll, we'll just leave the uh, the, fir the first thread in the block, which will be thread zero, uh, in order to write out that uh, partial sum result to our main uh, uh, in, into DRAM. So this is our result vector that we allocated on the host, uh, or on the device rather. And then for the next time, like I said, we're originally launching this with 256 thread blocks that will compute 256 partial results then we'll launch one more sum reduction of one thread block, which has 256 threads in it. And so we'll use that to condense those 256 to one. So this is kind of this 256 to one uh, kind of mapping going on. So we start at 65, 536. Uh, we reduce that to 256. And then, so that's basically just division by 256. And then we divide it by 256 again to get a single 
result, which will be the sum of that entire vector, all the elements of that vector. Then we'll copy out that result, and then we'll just do that check, like we said before. So let's go ahead and build the project, rebuild, and then we'll go ahead and run it. And here we go. So uh, as we were kind of expecting, we got our result of 65, 536. Uh, so a vector that's 65, 536 elements with a one in each of the uh, uh, each of the spots in that vector. You add all those ones together, you get 65, 536. So stay tuned to later videos where where we will uh, we will look into how to you know really optimize this. So as always, if we go to the GitHub page for this uh, up here. So if we go to CUDA programming, we have links to all the other videos and all the other examples. So expect you know a lot more content coming soon relating to CUDA programming, C++, and Python. Uh, so here was some reduced diverged. So this is the diver the warp divergence case, and here's the code we looked at today. So feel free to download this, play around with it. You like. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you had a nice day.